So, you want to make your APS-C camera look like a full-frame camera. You want to get that full-frame look. No problem, I'll help you. What you need is an APS-C camera, of course, then a tiny little screwdriver and a power drill. Okay, now what you need to do first is drill a little hole here at the top where the hot shoe is. Let me show you. What? Oh, you don't have a power drill. Um, okay, no problem. I think there's another way. <laughs> okay, so I wanna show you how having a smaller sensor, so an APS-C camera, how that affects your image and what you can do with camera settings and focal lengths to counter that effect. So in a way, how you can make your APS-C camera look more like full frame. And I say in a way because it's not exactly the right way of putting it, but I don't know how else to phrase it. And it's also how I get asked in the comments, you know? How can I make my APS-C camera look more like full frame? And it's not 100% wrong, it's not 100% correct, you know, it's somewhere in between, but it's not important. And let me just show you what I mean. I think that will make everything a whole lot more clear. So. I want to talk about two things, angle of view and blurry backgrounds. Let's start with angle of view. So look, I'm recording this with my Sony a7S III full frame and a 35mm lens and it looks like this. But I also have an APS-C camera, my Canon M50. Now if I would use this camera with the same focal length to film myself like this and Let's just do that, let me switch cameras and then you can see the difference because it will look completely different. And I'm not gonna move the tripod, so the tripod stays in the same place. That's really important and you'll see later why. Okay, let's switch cameras. And now it looks like this. So this is also a 35 millimeter lens, but on an APS-C camera. What the hell? It looks cropped in. And that's because the sensor is smaller and sensor size affects the angle of view of a lens. Let me switch back to the full frame because this is bad for my neck. Okay, now let's try to visualize that. So let's say this is a full frame sensor image of me shot with a 35mm lens. Now on an APS-C camera with the same 35mm lens, the image would look like this because the sensor is smaller. The angle of view is different, it looks cropped in. And that's also why they call a small sensor a crop sensor. And you can calculate the amount of cropping in, so the angle of view that you get, by applying the crop factor to the focal length. Every APS-C camera has a crop factor of 1.5 or 1.6, depending on the brand. Now, what does that mean? Well, for example, a 35mm lens is always a 35mm lens, no matter if you use it on a full-frame camera or an APS-C camera. You know, a lot of lenses you can use both on APS-C and full-frame, but if you use a 35mm lens on a full frame camera, then it will give you a true 35mm angle of view. But that same 35mm mounted on an APS-C camera will give you a narrower field of view. So the size of the sensor decides what the actual angle of view of a lens will be. A 35mm on an APS-C camera, let's do the math, 35mm times the crop factor. So. 35 times, and let's use 1.6 here, is 56 millimeter. That's the angle of view you get when you use a 35 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera. And of course, this applies to all focal lengths. And now that we know that, we can also reverse calculate. So with my APS-C camera, to get a similar field of view as 35 millimeter full frame, what you see now, I'll have to use a wider lens, a 22 millimeter on my APS-C camera. So 22 times crop factor 1.6 is 35.2 millimeter. So let's switch back to the APS-C camera, but now with a 22 millimeter lens. And you'll see that the angle of view will be almost exactly the same as 35 millimeter on full frame, what you see now. There. So pretty much the same, right? It's not exactly the same because this is actually 35.2 millimeters, but you know, almost the same. Okay, recap. You have to apply the crop factor to the focal length to know the angle of view equivalent. 
and it doesn't matter what type of lens it is. Also lenses that are specifically designed for APS-C cameras, you have to apply that crop factor. And something else very important, you could also use a 35mm lens on your APS-C camera and then just move the camera back to get the same framing. But what you're doing then is changing the distance to the subject and that affects the perspective and how blurry the background is. Your image will look completely different, so that's not a solution, it's a, you know, a workaround. Okay, so that was angle of view, now the next problem. And I switched back to my full frame camera, but I changed the settings a little bit to explain and to show you the next problem, the blurry backgrounds. So this is the amount of blur that I get when I use a 35 millimeter lens on my full frame camera with the aperture set at f3.5. This is the amount of blur. Now let me switch to my APS-C camera with a 22 millimeter lens to get the same angle of view and the aperture also set at f3.5. There, so same aperture but it looks different and I don't mean the colors or dynamic range because they're different cameras and a different price range. Just the amount of blur, that's what I'm talking about. Now with the APS-C camera, the background looks less blurry and that's because depth of field is affected by a number of things. Distance to the subject and aperture is still the same but also focal length affects depth of field and I'm using a different focal length now, a 22 millimeter instead of a 35 millimeter to get the same angle of view. But that means that the depth of field has been affected. A wider lens has more depth of field, more of the image is in focus. So I have to change the aperture settings now to get the same amount of blur as when I was shooting with a 35mm on a full frame camera. I'll have to use even lower aperture numbers. On my full frame it was 3.5, the APS-C now also set at 3.5 but not enough blur. So let's go down to, well it only goes to 2.0, so let's go down to 2.0 and see what that looks like. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close now, right? But do you see the problem? Let's say I was shooting at f1.4 on my full frame camera. Then with my APS-C, I would have to use even lower aperture numbers. So a 22mm f1.0 or 0.9, but that doesn't exist. So that's when you run up against the limitations of an APS-C camera. When you need that super shallow depth of field, especially at wide apertures. So before you decide to dump your APS-C camera, first check your lenses. How wide is the aperture and what's the angle of view equivalent? And also realize that you'll have to use different camera settings compared to someone who's shooting full frame if you want to get a similar looking image. So, you know, buying a different lens, a new lens, might solve your problems. Might. Because, of course, an APS-C camera has its limitations, that's normal. But, you know, make sure that you don't dump your APS-C camera and buy a full frame for the wrong reasons. Um, that's it guys. One last thing maybe, crop factor does not affect exposure. So if an image is correctly exposed on full frame, then it will also be correctly exposed on an APS-C camera with exactly the same settings. Because you're basically cutting out the middle part of the same image. Know what I mean? I hope your brain is not on fire now. I know what it feels like. When I was studying photography, I also felt like that sometimes. But it gets better. You just have to practice. Practice, practice, practice. And slow down, regroup, watch this video again. 10 times. It'll help my analytics too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. And see you in the next one. The way we got something quite unique.